Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark, Nuts for Art, and I want to talk to you a little bit about the President's speech tonight in which he was talking about uh, pointing Joe Biden as the, uh, I'm surprised he didn't say it, but the cancers are. <laughs> Uh, he's going to head him to new to do new research to conquer cancer. Um, this comes right on the heels of David Bowie dying, and I am actually in 100% complete agreement with Ackerman about this. It's shocking that these people who are being killed that have a public venue don't speak out against nuclear as they are dying. They're on their deathbeds, and they still say nothing. That talks about how co-opted. The entire, uh, anybody that's on that box is completely co-opted by the nuclear industry. And so I think it's really important for us as anti-nuke activists to focus our attention on two thoughts. Uh, one is, it's up to us to change the minds of our elected officials and people that have the ability to make decisions to see nuclear waste not as just, uh, what are we going to do with the waste, it's so terrible, but it's a public health risk. And right now, people in St. Louis are dying. One of the things I've discovered since I've really picked up this mantle is that our country is one huge, gigantic, toxic slew of nuclear waste. Uh, it's not just St. Louis. We have Hanford. We have the WIPP. Uh, the, the difference is, in St. Louis, this is why St. Louis is unique. We have people living half a block away from a nuclear dump site. There's a thousand families in St. Louis who have been identified who need to be relocated. Relocated, folks. They need to be moved away. And none of those elected officials have even created the legislation. You know, Governor Jay Nixon won't declare a state of emergency because he's taking money in from Republic Services. Now, if he declared a state of emergency, the people of St. Louis could start applying for federal funds to move away right away. But he's not doing that. Why? For the very same reason that Arnie Gunderson gets on on the radio and uh, Kevin Camps gets on television and says, oh, there's just a microscopic amount of radiation coming from Fukushima. Why do they do that? We pull our hair out. Those of us that are like able to face the facts want the truth. We can't comprehend why these guys keep softballing it. And no, it's not because they're not really anti-nuclear. When I hear that, my ears, my ears just explode. They are anti-nuclear. They just don't know how to face it. They, don't, they want to be on television. They want to be on the public airwaves. They don't want to be deemed. They don't want to be ridiculed. Because they know the people that own that box and own the radio stations. Uh, what's it called? Churchill Industries? They own almost every single radio station in the United States. And those people own the nuclear industry. So anybody who's going to be on the radio on a regular basis, on most mainstream radio, most mainstream news media, if they say anything against the nuclear industry, they never get on television again. Their work is ridiculed. So, you know, we got guys, uh, you know, those guys that are attacking Dana. You know, they've been given several million dollars. They poured through it. And they've been given more millions of dollars to downplay this. How could they do that? It's unconscionable. It's inhumane. It lacks humanity. But why do they do it? The emperor has no clothes. Everybody's saying it. No one wants to come out and name the elephant in the room. Like, uh, we got nuclear waste everywhere. Everywhere in this country. We are one f toxic nuclear stew. And our cancer rates are off the charts, Mr. President, because of you telling us there's no problem when Fukushima happened. We now have the Fukushima volcano spewing out radiation for five years in a row. Now, did Obama do that? No. And what would have Obama done if he had said, oh, look, folks, we've got a real emergency going on in Fukushima. 
and we all need to protect ourselves, keep our kids inside. You know what that would have meant? We kept our kids inside still to this day. Now, the president touted the idea that we have the largest military in the entire world. We're the big dog in the room. Everybody comes to us. Everybody wants us. We're the big people. And yet, our big people do nothing but deny that radiation causes harm, underreport the negative effects of radiation by 90%. Dr. John Goffman... I'll show you his picture on the back of this. This is Goffman and Tamplin. This is Tamplin. No, here we go. That's Dr. John Goffman. Uh-oh. What was that? Oh, yeah, that was a recipe I wrote on how to make your own stuff. Uh, Dr. John Goffman studied what happened to the Japanese people for real after World War II for over 20 years? At the end of his 20-year study in the mid-60s, you know what he found out? The United States military, the United States government, and the IAEA, the nuclear industry, underreport the negative effects by 90% and deny that radiation causes harm. So now today, when we have up in Canada a big, gigantic uranium powder spillage, the Canadian government comes out and says, no harm to human health. The day after the flooding in St. Louis, where we know radioactivity is leaking all over the place there, and people are living less than a half a mile away from a nuclear dump site, the EPA has the nerve to put on their website, we don't anticipate any harm to human health. They don't anticipate it because they're not looking. <clears throat> Look, it's not enough for us to just say uh, we're anti-nuclear. We need to have a bigger tent than that, folks. And we need to give some room for people who have been scared. Arnie Gunderson, Chris Busby, Beyond Nuclear, they're tiptoeing. They're tiptoeing. They're tiptoeing. They're tiptoeing. They don't want to say the emperor has no clothes. They're still saying, wow, what a great jacket. Kevin Camp said on television on Tom Hartman's show, there's a microscopic amount of radiation in the Pacific Ocean. My ears were going to explode the day I heard that. That was only a few months ago. Arnie Gunderson argued that there was no nuclear meltdown for months. Then he decided to jump ship and say, oh my God, it's really bad. Because now he's able to make some money off of it, I guess. I don't know what his, I don't know what his motivation is. I do know I called him up to come and speak and his wife told me that they had to charge money because that was their living. Which, you know, I can understand. Uh, I don't know how much they wanted because I had no money to offer them, so I didn't ask. <laughs> but uh, as Helen Caldicott says, the patient is in the emergency room and in critical condition. And frankly, our planet is dying. We had whales washing up. We have children in St. Louis dying. Congressman Lacey Clay's office identified a thousand families that need to be relocated today. There's not one piece of legislation moving through any house in the government to relocate those people. I've called the president and asked him to please contact Governor A.J. Nixon to declare a state of emergency. And tonight he had the frickin' nerve to say that he's going to appoint Joe Biden to head up a department to cure cancer. We are not going to cure cancer until we stop nuclear. Stop nuclear. Stop nuclear. Stop nuclear. Nuclear is cancer. Nuclear equals cancer. Nuclear equals cancer. We're already so far in the toxic slew, folks. It lasts, some of this stuff lasts hundreds of thousands of years. Tritium is in our water. They can't get tritium out of our water. It attaches to water. It attaches to our bones also and causes cancer. And they know this. This is the thing. They know this. And they have... God knows why they put their blinders on. I'm not in those offices of the elected officials. I have no idea why they're doing what they do. 
I do know that we have to stop name calling, stop calling people out and saying, you're not anti-nuclear enough. You're not anti-nuclear enough. You're not really anti-nuclear. I am. I'm the only one. No, 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 no. You're not the only one. We're all in it together, brother. We're all in it together. We're all in this toxic slew of nuclear pollution together. Everybody is going to be anti-nuclear in 10 years, folks. There isn't going to be... We are going to see that rates of cancer go skyrocketing. If we have any children being born in 10 years. I mean... The levels of radiation are nothing like we saw coming out of Chernobyl. Nothing. We have never seen the levels of radiation on our planet post Fukushima. That sentence didn't make sense. Do you know what I'm saying? Prior to Fukushima, we never saw these levels of radiation. And you know what? It is up to us. We have to put our courage feet on. We have to take action. We have to educate ourselves. This is why I'm reading this book. You know why I'm reading this book? Because people don't read. It's not easy to read, folks. It's an, it's an exercise, an intellectual exercise. John, for the scientific types, there are books that John Goffman has given. They're out there. They're easy to read. They're not hard books. We need to read these documents. It's important for us to arm ourselves with information. Because we have been baffled by, well, I'm not going to cuss. I have this habit of cussing that I've really committed to stopping. But really, it's up to us to join together. Remember our humanity, love each other. Love is greater than fear. Happiness is resistance. Refuse to be unhappy. Learn emotional freedom technique. Learn how to control your own emotions. Get therapy, for God's sakes. If you have emotional issues and you're not living your life in joy, then get therapy because guess what? There's freedom. There is freedom, even in this world of hate. And if you have significant ill health, for God's sake, stop going to the AMA if you can, you know, like, honestly, it's outrageous. Grow your own vegetables. Start a garden. People complain they can't get organic food. Grow your own organic food. Build a greenhouse in the winter. These are skills. We need to learn how to feed ourselves, folks, and take it back from the industrialized military complex, the industrialized food complex. We have got to get our lives back. We need our future back. We have sold our... It's not them taking us out of this picture. It's us taking ourselves out of the picture. We're being sold down the river freely. We choose it. We go to the doctor and take whatever stupid pills they tell us to take. We have the slightest little bit of problem. We start running to the hospital and let them start plugging things up in our bodies. That's outrageous. We have to have some courage to learn how to take care of ourselves. This problem with nuclear is so big, you guys. It's, it is, it, you know, we must learn how to not be overwhelmed by it. We must learn how to cope with it because it is our new reality. We live in the age of fission. And don't expect the people that we look up to. You know, we've been trained to look up to singers and Hollywood types and politicians. They're just regular people. They're just as easily intimidated and co-opted as everybody else. In fact, even worse, they know if any of them come out anti-nuclear at all, their record sales will diminish, their movie sales will diminish, they will get no more record deals, they will get no more movie deals, they will never be on television, they will not be on the radio. This is why David Bowie said nothing in the last 18 months with his cancer. So many people in Sellafield are dying. So many people around the whip are now dying or getting cancer. I mean, maybe maybe dying, maybe getting, going into remission. I don't know if there's, you know, who knows? Maybe this is some stupid secret plot. Maybe they have the answers to cancer already, and they're just going to let Joe Biden miraculously rag it in. But I doubt it. He let his own kid die. I mean, Bo Biden died of cancer, and he said nothing about the nuclear industry. When that happened, it really broke my heart. 
And tonight when I hear President Obama talking about, I believe in America, we can be, we're great. I believe in us. I believe in our spirit. Well, you know, me too. And you know what that means? That we can learn to refocus our entire government to be anti-nuclear. To understand that nuclear is death to everybody, not just a few. You know, it's a mistake that as humans we made. And it's up to us to face it. So I'm going to end here, you guys. I hope I haven't rambled on for too long. I think you get the gist of it. It really is. Hold on. It's up to us. It's on our watch, as Dana says. Uh, these people that have been co-opted, these so-called scientists who tell us don't worry about it, uh, they're the most pathetic of all. I feel sorriest for them. But you know what? The only way we can combat this is not with hate but with love. We can love them more, forgive them more, uh, take action, learn, educate ourselves, and um, stop this. And I would suggest that all of us write and call the White House and tell them that we're never going to cure cancer unless we stop nuclear, that nuclear equals cancer. So we need to stop and we need to demand that the NRC be accountable to Congress because right now they're refusing to submit to Congress information that, that's been requested. So they have that whole secret government that, uh, you know, we can take it back. So I'll end here. I'll talk to you guys later. Ciao.